Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over a couple things having to do with the camera. We're going to be breaking out of the camera's rotation away from the character movement so that that way when you don't have the weapon drawn you can move around normally even towards the camera and the character will rotate properly in the direction of the velocity. And then also we're going to go ahead and make it so that when you go into combat mode it will actually switch back to the way the camera used to work so that that way we kind of got the best of both worlds. First off, we're going to need to make a couple changes to the character controller. All we're going to be doing is making the character rotate in the direction of the movement and be separated from the camera pivot, and then also have an option to turn that on or off. And if it's off, then it should rotate directly to whatever the camera's rotation currently is. Now, mind you, if you look at the hierarchy here, you'll notice we have changed up a couple things having to do with the camera pivot. We notably broke it out into a container and added that container into just a blank node, and then we went ahead and removed the script from both of those. We're going to be adding that script back, but we're going to make some pretty heavy changes to it. So first off, let's go ahead and make those changes to the character controller. So we're going to go ahead and hop into code here and make a couple changes. All right, so we're going to add a couple variables up here, specifically three. The first one is going to be a node 3D, and this is going to be our camera container. And this is just going to be a reference to the pivot node. And then we're also going to need a public float rotation speed, and this is also going to be an export. The last thing we're going to need is a public boolean allow velocity rotation. We're not actually going to export this one, as it doesn't need to be edited in the editor. It's just going to be used to toggle between the velocity rotation, that is to rotate towards the velocity the player is moving, versus the camera rotation, to rotate the direction the camera is pointed. Now, we are going to need to go down here to where the direction is calculated and use that based off of the camera container as opposed to the player, as they're no longer the same thing. Then following this, we are going to go ahead and create a new variable, and this is going to be a vector3 current normalized velocity. We're going to make sure to do this only when the direction is not vector3.0. And then we're going to set that to two local global position plus velocity and then we're going to normalize this this is just going to get us a local direction that we're currently moving then what we're going to do is we're going to cast that to the current input with a vector 2 but it's going to be the current normalized velocity dot x and current normalized velocity dot z we're ignoring the y And then if we are not moving, that is we're standing still, we're going to go ahead and put the current input as vector 2.0. So down below that, we're going to go ahead and create a new if statement. And we're going to say if allow velocity rotation, and if that velocity length is greater than 0 0.1, then we're going to go ahead and rotate the rotation degrees to a new vector 3. And the new vector 3 is going to be rotation degrees dot x and z. But the y axis we are going to go ahead and rotate with a fairly complex mathematical formula. We're going to use math f or just raid to degrees. And then within that what we're going to do is we're going to use the lerp angle function. So what this does is it's basically a lerp function but it allows you to lerp around the 360 degree mark. So we're going to take the degrees to radians as lerp angle takes radians not degrees. And we're going to use the degrees to radians function for rotation degrees dot y so that gets us our radians for our y rotation and then we're going to lerp that to the arc tangent of velocity x and z but inverted this is somewhat complex and uses algebra but the end result is that it gets us a radian pointed in the direction we want so then we lerp to that using the standard delta multiplied by rotation speed it's a little bit hacky but it certainly gets the job done Now following this, we're going to go ahead and put in an else statement for the allow velocity rotation. This is the situation where we are no longer rotating based off of velocity. And all we're going to do in that one is we're just going to set the rotation degrees to a new vector 3 with its current z and x. And we're going to set the y to the camera container rotation degrees dot y. This just gets us whatever the camera's rotation currently is. 
And then last but not least, all we need to do is create two functions for disable velocity rotation and enable velocity rotation so that it can be accessed via a event or a signal or just a normal function call later on maybe. All this is going to do is set the allow velocity rotation to false or true respectively. All right, and we're back in Godot. Now, there's a couple of minor changes to the character controller, but you won't really see any difference until we actually get the camera controller changes in and the combat controller. So let's go ahead and begin with the combat controller. This is going to be a very small change. All we're going to be doing is adding a signal. So let's go ahead and hop into that real quick and wrap that up. So we're actually going to be adding two signals. The first will be on combat begin and the second will be on combat end. You do this in C sharp slightly different than Godot script. So in C sharp, we're going to do a public delegate void and we're going to make sure to put in the bracket signal as opposed to export. Always remember to put event handler on the end of the name. And then in Godot script, it'll just be signal and then the name. Now we are going to go ahead and emit the signal whenever we set is com in combat to true and is in combat to false, respectively begin and end. And that's all we're really going to have to do for combat controller. It's, like I said, pretty simple. So we can go ahead and hop over to camera controller. Now this one's going to be a bit more complex. We're pretty much going to gut the entirety of the original camera controller. We go over here, pretty much none of this spot right here is going to be necessary. So we're going to redo this. So we need to go ahead and do that. So first we're just going to go ahead and get rid of these exports. And then we're going to create another about eight or nine exports. So the first three are gonna be node 3D. So we're gonna call the first one camera container node. And then we're just gonna copy and paste that for the next couple. That way we can go ahead and just rename them and it'll make things a little bit faster. So the second one is going to be called camera pivot node. And the third one is going to be body node. Then from here on out, it's all gonna be floats. So we're gonna go ahead and change that in a second. But the next variable is going to be the camera pan desired vertical speed. And then we're also going to need the horizontal speed for that one after we're done changing them all to floats. And following that, we're going to go ahead and do camera pan blend speed. And this is going to be kind of the speed at which we linearly interpolate between one movement and another. Then we're going to have camera horizontal move speed. And this is the actual movement as opposed to the rotating and panning. And then camera vertical move speed. Following that, we're going to also have camera movement dampening. This is just going to soften up the movement a little bit. And it's going to be a very small number as well. And then following that, we're going to have camera change speed. And this is the change of the actual desired target position. And then the max allowed distance. This is just going to be a limit to make sure we don't get too far away from the player. Following this, we are going to need a couple private variables. It's going to be a vector three target rotation and a vector three current velocity. And we're just going to zero both these out to vector three dot zeros. Now, following these variables, we're going to go ahead and edit the input function. We're going to cut out what we already had. And first, we're going to set the target rotation dot y to mathf.wrap or just wrap in Godot script. And this is just going to wrap it around the 360 mark. And then within that, we're going to put two parentheses and we're going to say negative one times delta dot x. This is just going to invert it times camera pan desired horizontal speed plus target rotation dot y. This is going to get our rotation horizontal and multiply it by our sensitivity. But it's also going to make sure to wrap it around 360 degrees. Following this, we're also going to need the target rotation dot x. And we're going to do close to the same thing with the parentheses. And we're going to say negative 1 times delta dot y multiplied by camera pan desired vertical speed. And then we're going to add the camera pivot node dot rotation degrees dot x instead of our rotation we're going to be adding the camera pivot node or rather instead of our target rotation following all of this we're going to go ahead and do target rotation dot x equals mathf dot clamp or just clamp in godot script and then put in the target rotation dot x and clamp it to negative 60 by 50. this is just our vertical rotation we probably ought to do this as a variable but i'm not going to worry about that right now
following this, we are going to want to go ahead and put in a public override physics process. And we're just going to scroll down a little bit to do that. All right, and within the physics process, we're going to start by creating a new direction. And this is going to be vector three, and we're going to call it current dir. And this is going to be just the body node global position minus the camera container node dot global position normalized. And this is just going to get us a direction vector from the camera node towards the body node. Then we're going to multiply each of the x, y, and z by camera horizontal movement speed, or in the case of y, by camera vertical movement speed. This is going to mean that we can move up and down at a different rate than horizontal. That lets us slow down the up and down movement so that that way we have very satisfying jumps like you would see in Mario or something like that. Following this, we're going to go ahead and take our current velocity and add the difference between our current velocity and our current dir. This is going to get the difference between the desired direction and the current velocity. And then we're going to multiply that by delta and multiply that by camera change speed. This is just going to control the rate at which we change from our current velocity to what we want it to be. And then we're going to multiply all of that by the camera movement dampening. This is just going to soften out all the movements and make sure we don't do anything too suddenly. With cameras, this can be specifically important. Next, we're going to need another variable, and this is just going to be the distance between the body and the camera. And this is just, we're just going to call this current distance to body, and we're going to use the distance to function between our global position and the body node global position, or the camera container node global position. Following this, we're going to go ahead and make an if statement. And this if statement is going to check to see if the current velocity length is greater than the current distance to body. This is we're overshooting where we want to be. And if that's the case, we want to go ahead and set the current velocity to current velocity dot normalized multiplied by current distance to body. This ensures that we never overshoot the body and we don't have to spring back and forth. It just moves straight to the body and softly stops. Following this, we are going to need another if statement, and this one's going to be checking to see if the current distance to body is greater than the max allowed distance. And if that's the case, what we're going to do is take the current global position of the camera, and we're going to add to it the current direction normalized multiplied by the current distance to body subtracting the max allowed distance. This is going to give us the difference to make sure we always stay within the max allowed distance away from the body. And following that, we're going to go ahead and say camera container node dot global position plus equals the current velocity. And that's just going to apply our velocity to our actual camera node. Following that, we're going to go ahead and do camera pivot node dot rotation equals a new vector three. And this is where the rotation part of it's going to come in. So within that vector three, we're going to go ahead and take the X and Y as a math F dot lerp angle, or in the case of Godot script, just lerp angle. And we're going to take in as the first one, the rotation dot X and Y as they currently stand. And then the second variable, we're going to set in the math F dot degrees to radians or degree to radian in Godot script. And we're going to pass in the target rotation X and Y. And then for the lerping value, we're just going to take the camera pan blend speed and multiply that dot by delta. Remember on C sharp, you have to cast the delta to a float. And that's going to wrap up pretty much everything with the camera enhancements on the camera controller. So we're just going to copy and paste that for the other one. Make sure to change the dot X to dot Y, but that's pretty much it. And we'll get back into Godot script as soon as we've wrapped that up. All right, and we're back in Godot. 
So we can go ahead and implement that camera controller and we'll just drag her right in there. We've got a couple new variables here to say the least. So let's go ahead and fill them. So first off, we're gonna need the camera container and we're gonna need the camera pivot. We're also gonna need a body node to track to. We could just attach this to the game rig, but I'm actually gonna attach it to the hip container or the hip attachment. The reason for this being is that it actually adds a little bit of bounce when the character jumps because it is trying to track the actual object. The shoulders or the chest might even be better and that's what I do in Hermit. So play around with this, see what feels right for you. Now under camera controller, we do have a couple variables here that need to be set up and these are all actually incorrect. After doing a bunch of testing, I realized that these variables work best for me. Once again, these are entirely subjective, so set them up to whatever you would like and figure out what feels right for you. I ended up going with the desired vertical speed as negative three. That just ends up with a little bit of a smoother movement vertically. Mind you, it's a little bit inverted and there's some issues there, but right now that variable works just fine. Now there's a couple other things we need to set up over here in the combat controller. We need to set up the on combat begin and on combat end, and we can just set these to the character base and set them to disable and in enable respectively and all this is going to do is make it so that once we go into combat we go ahead and disable rotation I'm going to be using signals mostly to communicate between scripts now as it doesn't really care what the arriving location is whether it's c-sharp or godot script right now it's godot script but if i was to drag c-sharp script in here it would work just fine now we do need to go ahead and throw in the camera container over here and that's going to be this node 3d this way the body knows which way to rotate when in combat and that should be pretty much it if we go ahead and hit play we should see the results Ah, minor error here. So if we go up here to the camera controller, we need to make sure it's inheriting from just node as node 3D is no longer necessary. Previously, this was on the actual camera pivot object, but now it's on camera controller, which is just a node object. So we need to go ahead and make sure to do that on both of our scripts. So if we save that, make sure to build, we should be able to go ahead and hit play and it should run just fine. All right, and here we are in game. And as you can see, we can now move in any direction and the animations automatically update for whatever direction you're running in. You can barely notice it as the blending is fairly quick, but the animation does actually transition between the different states while still actually respecting the rotation. Mind you, there's a lot of work that you could go into with the animations to make proper turning animations and things like that, but for the time being, this works just fine. And if we draw our weapon, now we're back into that proper third person animation style. And you'll notice also that we've set the vertical movement speed to a lower speed than the horizontal. This gives it a little bit more vertical movement as that is something that can be lost if you would hard attach your camera to your character. But for now, everything just works pretty well out of the box and we should be able to use that going forward. Now, mind you, I do need to go ahead and make it in so that the camera will collide with the environment and then also we'll want to work on the camera zooming in and zooming out. Mind you, there was one minor issue here. I forgot to attach the character base camera container to the camera pivot as opposed to the camera container. So I went ahead and updated that in the script, but just be aware of that going forward. And we'll be back here next week with maybe a little bit of a wrap up to the whole animation and camera series. I wanted to go ahead and fix the camera up before I packaged it all up because I want that to be a nice usable solution. But then going on, we'll actually be working into something else. I'm not entirely sure yet. There's been a couple requests, so I may just do one of them. But then there's also a couple beginner's tutorials that have been rocking around in my head that I might have to go back and do those. But for now, this is it. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back back here next week for the next tutorial on Wednesday.